Imagine being in Jakarta's crowded city center, thinking of the serene hills of Bandung. In the past, you'd have to commit hours to the journey, navigating traffic and long stretches of road. But the roar of vehicles and the ceaseless urban hustle, the distance seemed even more daunting. The challenge was clear, finding a way to bring these cities closer. Now, on the horizon, a new solution emerged, the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail. Launched on October 2nd, 2023, this massive rail system isn't just about cutting down travel time, it's about redefining how Indonesians move between these major cities. By making what was once a tedious trip a quick and efficient ride, the rail stands as an illustration of Indonesia's commitment to progress. So what led to the development of this transformative project? How will it influence the broader landscape of Southeast Asia? And in what ways will this rail system inspire future infrastructural innovations in the region? The Jakarta Bandung High Speed Rail is not just a local endeavor. It's intricately tied to a grander vision, China's Belt and Road Initiative. Launched in 2013, this ambitious project aims to enhance connectivity between Asia, Europe, and Africa, promoting trade, investments, and mutual growth. In the urban landscapes of Southeast Asia, rapid population growth and booming economies have birthed intense traffic congestion and strained conventional transportation systems. Indonesia, with Jakarta at its helm, is no stranger to these challenges. The journey between Jakarta and Bandung, two critical economic hubs, has been notoriously tedious and time-consuming. The high-speed rail project directly addresses this bottleneck, promising not only swifter transportation, but also alleviating pressure on overburdened roadways. In doing so, it offers a solution to a pressing problem, while fostering potential economic and social opportunities for the regions connected. Central to the execution of this rail project in Indonesia is PTKCIC, a powerful consortium. It's a fusion of strength from both nations, four of Indonesia's prominent state companies joining hands with Beijing's heavyweight China Railway International Co. This collaboration is symbolic of the shared vision and trust between the two nations. Financially speaking, the support is substantial. A 75% loan for the China Development Bank is fueling the project, showing China's commitments and belief in this venture. Meanwhile, the remaining 25% emerges from the consortium's own funds, indicating a shared risk and belief in the rail's future success. Together, these components underscore the commitments, collaboration, and grand vision behind this transformative rail project. The engineering and technical aspects of this rail project stand out as feats of modern design and meticulous planning. The goal? To efficiently connect Jakarta and Bandung, covering a distance of 142 kilometers, but not just at any speed. These trains are designed to reach blistering speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour, cutting down what used to be a several hour journey into a swift, comfortable experience. But beyond speed, capacity matters. Each of these cutting-edge trains are 209 meters long and designed to accommodate a whopping 600 passengers. The underlying idea is not just to transport people swiftly, but to do so at a scale that can genuinely make a difference to daily commutes and long-term travel between the cities. However, while speed and capacity are at the forefront, safety remains paramount. Indonesia, being prone to natural calamities like earthquakes and floods, demanded a design that could stand strong against nature's unpredictabilities. As a result, the rail system is equipped with advanced earthquake and flood responsive systems. This not only ensures the safety of passengers, but also offers peace of mind, knowing that extensive precautions are in place. The technical prowess behind this project reflects a harmonious blend of speed, capacity, and safety, all working in tandem to transform intercity travel in Indonesia. Moving beyond just the engineering prowess, the rail project shines in its distinctive features and designs tailored for the modern traveler. 
First and foremost is the catchy name, Woosh. Not just a whimsical title, Woosh signifies three core values of the project. Time saving, optimal operation, and reliable system. It serves as a constant reminder that this isn't just any ordinary train. It's an embodiment of efficiency and reliability. The focus on comfort, especially at such high speeds, hasn't been overlooked. Every design element inside the train has been meticulously chosen to ensure passengers not only get from point A to point B swiftly, but do so in utmost comfort. Seats are ergonomically designed. Interiors display a sense of space, and the smooth glide of the train, despite its speed, ensures that passengers can relax or work without any jarring interruptions. But the vision for Woosh extends beyond just the train's confines. Realizing the importance of holistic travel, there's a keen emphasis on integrating the high-speed rail with other transportation methods. The stations are strategically positioned to allow easy transitions to local buses, trams, and even airports. The idea is simple, yet profound. Woosh shouldn't just be a standalone experience, but should fit seamlessly into a traveler's broader journey, ensuring they can move from their homes or offices to distant destinations without any unnecessary pauses or hassles. Thus, with its unique name, traveler-centric design, and emphasis on integration, Woosh is not just another train, it's a beacon of modern transportation, reshaping the way we perceive and experience travel. Another noteworthy aspect of this rail project is its commitment to the environment and sustainability. Unlike many traditional transportation methods, this high-speed train is entirely electric. This not only signifies a modern approach, but also a conscious effort to reduce carbon emissions. By opting for electric power, the rail system minimizes the CO2 released into the atmosphere, especially when considering the potential reduction in road traffic and short-haul flights. But it's not just about speed and design, it's a step towards reimagining transportation with an environmental lens. The project does more than link two cities. It offers a blueprint for a more sustainable transit future. The commencement of this ambitious project dates back to 2016, when Indonesia proudly broke ground, setting their sights on an operation launch in 2019. However, like many groundbreaking projects, this too faced its fair share of hurdles. Land acquisition became a formidable challenge, compounded further by critical environmental considerations that demanded attention. Moreover, Indonesia's characteristic tropical climate brought its own set of challenges to the table, necessitating adaptations in construction methodologies. As the project progressed, unforeseen factors, including the global disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, added to the delays. What initially was budgeted at 66.7 trillion rupai, $4.3 billion, saw a surge in costs, eventually settling at an estimate of 113 trillion rupai, $7.3 billion. By Monday, ticket pricing was yet to be locked in, but projections from PTKCIC were hinting at a range between 250,000 rupai, $16, for the standard class and going up to 350,000 rupai, $22.60 for the elite VIP seating. It's worth noting for travelers to downtown Bandung, an additional feeder train from the Padalarang station is essential. Tacking on an extra 20 minutes and around 50,000 rupai, $3.20 to their journey. To put this in perspective, a shuttle bus fare stands at approximately 77,685 rupai, roughly $5 US. The dynamic pricing, coupled with the project's evolution, depicts the complexity and ambition of Southeast Asia's first high-speed rail endeavor. Building on the momentum of the Jakarta Bandung Rail, the horizon holds promising expansions. Plans are already in motion to extend the high-speed train route, reaching from Bandung all the way to Surabaya. This extension not only represents a leap in domestic connectivity, but also unfolds a plethora of opportunities for foreign investors. 
The main route, primed from development, presents a golden chance for the establishment of retail outlets, set to benefit both local and tourists alike. But the collaboration doesn't stop at infrastructural development. This partnership with China is anticipated to foster a significant technology transfer, positioning Indonesia to potentially produce its own high-speed trains domestically in the future. Such a move would not only symbolize self-sufficiency, but also mark a significant step in Indonesia's journey to becoming a key player in the world of modern transportation. How do you view Indonesia's ambitious move in revolutionizing transportation between Jakarta and Bandung with the high-speed rail? Is this a game-changer for Southeast Asia's connectivity? We're eager to hear your thoughts, so please share them in the comments section. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And for more updates, hit that bell icon. See you in the next video.